We already had inflation and we already had a recession under COVID. So what are economists sounding alarm bells for? Again? Listen, I understand that a lot of people want to believe in this idea of like a generous, a kind and giving billionaire. You know, the, the sort of billionaire who, who stepped on people to build his way to the top, screwed over his workers, refused to pay his workers, threatened to deport his workers. That kind of nice guy. You know, a lot of people maybe foolishly want to believe that these billionaires, you know, they, they hit that certain level where they go, you know what? I have enough money. It's time for me to now do some good. But I'm reminded of this fantastic scene from Wall Street 2, uh, which I know a lot of people crapped on, but I actually kind of liked. Let's take a look. What's your number? Sorry? Oh, you would start you at 300 like everybody else. I mean, as a partner, I only pull in 600, and the bonus is... No, no, no. Your number. The amount of money you would need to just walk away from and live. See, I find that everybody has a number, and it's usually an exact number, so what is yours? More. Now, I know that a lot of people in the comments will make the argument that billionaires do a lot to enrich society and make people's lives better. They invent tech and online retail superstores and, and stuff like that that make our lives a little bit easier. But really, at the end of the day, billionaires exist to do one thing, and that is continue to further enrich themselves. You remember this exchange on Twitter the other day? Uh, markets will tumble, but when the storm passes and everyone realizes we are on sounder footing, there will be a rapid recovery to a healthier, sustainable economy. And Elon Musk responds and says, sounds about right. There's just one thing. When Elon says it sounds about right, he's not talking about you. He's talking about billionaires. A uh, healthier, sustainable economy for the super wealthy. Th think about it for a second. Trump, the billionaire real estate developer, imposes these tariffs. He also cuts corporate taxes at the same time. Uh, economies tumble. People can't afford to buy things. There's a massive recession. What happens when you lose your job? A lot of people in the comments said, hey, listen, I don't mind if it's a little bit of a hardship for a while. It'll eventually get better. There's only one problem. The average American doesn't even have $1,000. Like 44% of the United States does not have $1,000 in an emergency savings account. So what happens during that period of hardship? It's not going to be two or three weeks. It's going to be years, half a decade, a decade. Most Americans won't be able to withstand that. Most Americans don't have $1,000. But you know who does? The billionaires. So what happens when you lose your job and you still have a mortgage, kids, Food, clothes, groceries, car, insurance, what happens? Your house is gonna be the first thing that usually goes. You're gonna get foreclosed on. Who's gonna buy that house? BlackRock is gonna buy it. What about your investments? When you panic and you have to, you're forced to sell your entire investment portfolio because you need to recoup some money to pay your bills and just get by. Who's gonna buy those stocks? It's gonna be opportunistic millionaires and billionaires who can seize upon that because they've got the reserves to ride out three, five years of economic downturn. Kenneth, that's me. This sounds an awful lot like a conspiracy theory. Well, what did you think was gonna happen when the billionaire got elected? You really thought that he was gonna look after the people? Of course not. He's a billionaire, it's in his nature to look after himself, enrich himself, enrich his friends who happen to be corporate billionaires. And by the time he and Elon are done cutting Medicare and cutting Medicaid and cutting social safety nets and cutting corporate taxes, which means middle-class taxes will likely go up and causing massive inflation. By the way, these jobs aren't coming back like, like you saw right here, hold on. This headline came out today. Steve Madden just drastically changed his business to avoid Trump's tariffs. And everyone was like, yay, they're bringing the jobs back home. They're pulling out of China. There's, there's just one problem. The jobs aren't coming to the states. They're going elsewhere. Companies ready price hikes to offset Trump's global tariff plan. Trump's win could lead companies to push up prices. From cars to planes, global manufacturers brace for Trump's tariffs. Look at this headline from Fox. Trump's promise of higher tariffs mean consumers will have fewer choices when buying cars, economists say. Companies have a playbook for tariffs under Trump. It includes price increases. 
Added costs from Trump's tariffs will force these companies to raise their prices and likely exasperate shoppers following years of inflation. According to experts, the average household uh, could spend an additional $1,700 to nearly $4,000 annually due to tariff expenses. The other day, someone in my comments said, hey, listen, I would rather pay tariffs than have my taxes go up. Tariffs are a tax, dumbass. Trump's America First policy could trigger a global economic crisis. Trump's economic policy plans would worsen inflation, experts say. Not me. Experts. Look, uh, this is what the people wanted, right? They voted for him. They knew this was going to happen. We've been talking about it sounding the alarm for weeks, if not months. This is, this is what America voted for, right? This is, this, is, this is a good thing. It's a good thing, right? Right? Hello? So what can you do as an investor? Look, the people who are going to be hit the hardest by this are the people who have the most to lose. I'm gonna be fine. Millionaires and billionaires, they're gonna be fine. I've been on TikTok for six years uh, saying, hey, live below your means, have an emergency plan, start setting aside six to 12 months, not just because of Trump, but in general, it's always a good idea to have these plans. It's always a good idea to have a high yield savings account with six to 12 months. And people go, oh, come on, nobody can for afford that. I understand, I know it's a struggle out there, but a, a six to 12 month rainy day fund isn't something that you just throw it, wow, that snap was so embarrassing. There you go. It's not something that you just throw together overnight. A six to 12 month emergency plan is something that you kind of build to slowly over time. It's a little late for a lot of people now to start doing that. And that's who I feel the worst for because they're gonna be the ones who are screwed the hardest. If you are fortunate enough to, to ride out this wave, who knows how long it could be, who even knows if it's gonna happen, but if it does happen, better safe than sorry, be prepared. Here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I am already live below my means, but I'm cutting back even further, canceling unnecessary subscriptions, uh, incorporating more beans and more lentils into my dinner to stretch out meat a little bit further so it can go further. I'm also a huge fan of manager specials at my grocery store, so I go up to the giant, I look at the manager specials, pork chops, chicken thighs, whatever they have that is near expiration, I take, throw it in the freezer. I am in the process of formulating and investing wish list stocks that I wish to buy if markets take a tumble. And then I'm just gonna be sitting on cash at the moment. Look, I'm already heavily invested. So if you're a regular investor, retail investor, slowly adding to position over a 30 year period, you know, if you can afford it, you, you keep doing it, especially if markets take a tumble. But if you are a, uh, uh, an investor who has a pretty diverse portfolio already, like myself, I'm, I'm sitting on some cash and I'll deploy it in, in the event that there's a recession. I'm not gonna try to time things, but you know, really big down day, Dow the headlines, oh, the markets are crashing a thousand points. Oh, that seems like a good day to buy a little bit more. And that's just what I'm gonna do. But I, I do wish I had words of wisdom or advice or suggestions for someone, but the whole like, get a side hustle, walk dogs, uh, you know, people are already doing that. I, I, I'm sorry, I really do wish that I had an answer, but I don't. But if you do, please leave a comment below helping people. We can all learn together. I would love to hear what people are doing or doing in preparation for a potential downturn.